Welcome to Garden Plants with Jim Putnam. Let's talk black mondo grass. So I opened with black mondo grass. This is not technically a grass. It's actually in the asparagus family and a lot of things in the asparagus family are grass-like. Uh, these are in flower right now and we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. It has kind of a hanging little flower that you'll see on a lot of asparagus family plants. This black mondo grass is just a great contrast of color uh, in a shade garden and you know it has you know that you can get that grass-like look in an area where you typically can't get grass-like plants. Most grasses you know love you know love the full sun uh, whereas this one will take some shade. So the black mondo grass will reach about maybe six seven inches in height something like that. This is about the max height on these. These were cut back in the uh, late winter and have come back out from that. They're flowering right now and it's a, a lavender flower that contrasts really nicely against this dark, dark purple or black foliage on here. Uh, really, really interesting flower. It can take a couple years, you know, in the ground to get these flowers in these containers. They're quite happy and they respond to it pretty quickly. This is a clumping grass-like plant, so you don't have to worry about it sending runners way out. Uh, it will get wider in time, but it does it slowly, super, super easy to control uh, as, as a clumper rather than, you know, spreading by underground rhizomes. These are hardy in zone five to 10, so most folks watching this video are gonna be able to grow uh, this particular plant. That will have some impact on where it goes out in the landscape. Up in zone five, they can actually take quite a bit more sun, and you probably need a little bit of sun, uh, direct sun on them at some point during the day up in zone five. By the time you get down to zone 10, it's definitely a part shade or even shade uh, shade plant. I've got them, uh, I had Steph come in here a little closer with the camera and you can see this Selaginella is another shade uh, plant and how great this kind of strappy narrow foliage looks with something, um, how, how well it contrasts with a lot of our other interesting shade plants. The black mondo grass, just like the regular green mondo grass, looks great in mass as a ground cover. Uh, if you have a patio area, you know, you can line the edge of it or put some sort of mass of it near the patio and then plant higher things, you know, as you, as you get away from the, uh, the patio area. They look great in little, you know, in Asian gardens. They look great in formal gardens. If you have a formal garden that's in the shade, you know, boxwoods do better in the shade than most people think. And this mondo grass would look great as a lining of those formal plants. These really like rich uh, humus-based soils, so some sort of you know, added compost additive or something like that when you're planting them is going to help these a lot. We have ours planted in a little bit of dry shade at the house, and while they're alive, <laughs> they're definitely not thriving like the ones I see in these containers, which have a bit more moisture in them. So a moist, well-drained soil media that's rich in organic material is, is best for these. Uh, in terms of pruning them, they had pruned all of these back to the container. I would suggest you not do that unless it was absolutely tattered and needed to be reset in some way. Uh, they respond very slowly, just like Carex, to coming back from hard pruning. Again, they can be, it just is going to take a while to fill back in like it was before you actually pruned it. They can be divided um, after a couple years in the ground. I mean, these are easy to, I can pop this, I can flip this container over right now and probably make six new plants out of it very, very easily just by slicing them up. Some of your divisions may revert back to green. It's no big deal. Pull that one out, put another black one in its place. Uh, that's just no big deal at all. We keep our, the area in the garden mulched, you know, in between them while we're waiting for them to fill in. They can be put in about maybe eight inches apart to ultimately fill in. Um, eight, eight inches to 12 inches, something like that, so that they ultimately fill in. Really, that's how you about your pocketbook as to how fast they're gonna, you're going to be able to plant enough of them uh, to, uh, you know, to get them to fill into an area if you're trying to absolutely cover an area. Uh, slugs and snails can be an issue on these, uh, but rabbits are not, which is great. A lot of these kinds of things are things that rabbits like to, to, to do, you know, to, to have their way with in our, in our gardens. But it's rabbit resistant, really just an easy plant that adds something into a part shade or shady space. It's just different from a lot of the other things that we grow in those same spaces. This is black mondo grass. Mm -hmm. 